We welcome everybody to our chamber today. We generally pride ourselves on starting right on time, but it's very exciting to have so many guests with us today. And how fitting for us to be celebrating women today, Women's History Month. As we know, uh, this is the first time we're gathering back post-pandemic, that we really know that women have really uh, had an overshared burden during the pandemic. So how fitting and timely that it is you we are honoring today as we reopen the California State Senate. Thank you, Madam President. Members, I rise today to present SR 21, which recognizes March 2023 as Women's History Month, which I will from this point on refer to as Herstory Month. Women's History Month got its origins in 1977 when the Sonoma County Commission on the Status of Women launched a Women's History Week. The concept quickly caught national attention. By 1987, Congress officially declared March as, in their, what they passed, Women's History Month, but like I said, I'll refer to it as history from this point on, in perpetuity to recognize the accomplishments of women who have launched innovations in every sector and every field and made significant improvements to every aspect of American life. But most of those accomplishments have been untold or buried. I will not cite the many, many achievements women have made or the groundbreaking innovations in science, technology, politics, arts, culture, much more, by women who have changed the course of history and are changing the course of history. I won't do that because no one needs to stand and cite the achievements made by men as those are recognized and taken for granted on a daily basis, especially those by white men. So if there's any field that you cannot immediately think of, a woman who has made a significant accomplishment, I would ask that you look it up and bring yourselves that knowledge so that if you're ever in discourse about it, you have it and you know. It should be the same for the achievements by women. And that is our intent in recognizing Women's History Week and holding this California Women Making History floor ceremony today. And the Women's Caucus, as you know, has annually held a ceremony, which we previously had called uh, Women of the Year. But given that we have always done it in this month of March, which is Women's History Month, we rebranded it because we wanted to give women that due of women making history. So we look forward to breaking the snail pace of change that has led in the 36 years since Congress declared this. The value of women is overlooked still. Women remain paid less than their male counterparts. Women remain unprotected under the Constitution against discrimination on the basis of sex. And while today we have a record-breaking 50 women in our two legislative bodies, so out of the 120 legislators, we're still underrepresented. And most alarmingly, there is assault on our reproductive freedoms. All of these discrepancies are far more glaring if you are a woman of color. But I'm proud to bring this resolution forward as the chair of the Women's Caucus. And again, I look forward to all of us breaking that snail pace of change. And I am honored to welcome the women history makers from all over California here in the Capitol today as we celebrate these history makers from every legislative district. And with that, I ask respectfully for your I vote. Any other members any other members wishing to speak should raise their mic? Senator Wahab. Thank you, President, Senators, and members of the public. I rise today on behalf of the API Caucus in honor of Women's History Month. The unique place I occupy as the first Afghan American woman elected to public office in the United States does not escape me. It is a distinction that comes with pride and honor as well as specific pressure to represent my community and heritage. So few of us have microphones before us that those of us who do must speak with exacting clarity and purpose. This pressure isn't unique to me. 
I've heard other women discuss the pressure to speak, move, and act with nearly unattainable level of perfection so as to not invite negative perceptions of the communities and people they represent in the eyes of the American people. But no one exclusively represents a single community, and I am inspired by the ways in which we continue to see more women and women of color step into their power and step up to enact change in their communities. In 2022, 32.7% of the state legislators across the nation were women. California increased its representation of women in the legislature from 39 to 50. In 2022, across the U.S., 3.3% of all women state legislators identify as Asian American Pacific Islander. 6.7% of all women in Congress identify as Asian American Pacific Islander. And 15.2% of all women mayors in the top 100 most populous cities identify as Asian American Pacific Islander. The 2022 election saw increases in representation of women and women of color through elected office across the nation. This only happens when we carry each other forward, when we look across our communities and acknowledge the overlapping struggles we all have, when we work in solidarity with each other. I'm committed to opening the doors and uplifting others so people can see the beauty of diverse perspectives that exist within our community and our shared journey. I'm honored to work with the dynamic women in my office every day, but we've also made significant progress in leadership, and I'm proud to serve in this Senate with the first female Senate pro tem, Tony Atkins, the first female and woman of color secretary of the Senate, Erica Contreras, the first Latina chief sergeant at arms, Katrina Rodriguez. I'm also very fortunate to have a number of mentors who are brilliant women and take time to not only share with me so I can learn from them, but are eager to learn from me and my perspective. And that is truly the space I hope to occupy, someone who is generous with their time to help other women and humble enough to listen and learn from other women's experience and wisdom. Because that is where the magic happens, helping those that come up behind us and in turn learning the most from those we aim to help. As I look around this room, full of women stepping into their power, I look forward to making history and magic with you all and to leave this world a better place for all. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Menjivar, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam President. Members, I rise today on behalf of the LGBTQ caucus in support of SR21. Today, we honor the lives, contribution, and voices of the women in our nation's past and present, many of whom are the reason the LGBTQ plus community won the rights we enjoy today. Both cisgender and trans women have been at the forefront of social justice movements since the inter inception of our country, specifically in the LGBTQ plus community's fight for civil rights. It was women who cared for members of our community at the height of the AIDS crisis. Women like lesbian icon and Title IX activist Billie Jean King, who fought for parity for women in sports, or my personal favorite, Audre Lorde, a black queer feminist who, along with her contribution as a writer, was a civil rights activist. Bringing it closer to home here in the legislature, if it weren't for people like the pro temp or my seatmate, the senator from Stockton, their contributions, I would not be standing here today as a proud lesbian celebrating Herstory Month. I stand on their shoulders and the rest of my sisters in the LGBTQ plus community to continue fighting and delivering for all the great people of California. Because we must continue to fight. 31% of LGBTQ plus women experienced food insecurity in the past year compared to 17% of non-LGBTQ plus women. LGBTQ plus girls are overrepresented in the criminal and juvenile justice system and are more likely to be detained for running away or pro profiled by police. And LGBTQ plus women are more likely to experience sexual assault or violence and to struggle with their mental health, which is why we in the LGBTQ caucus are internally grateful to all the women who are helping to lead the way to a better tomorrow. I respectfully urge your I vote on SR 12. 21. Thank you, Senator. Senator Bradford, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam President, and I'm honored to stand here as Vice Chair of the Legislative Black Caucus in celebration and support of Women's History Month. It's often said it's a man's world, but we all know a woman makes it go round. It is also said, if you want something said, you ask a man. But if you want something done, you ask a woman. California has been at the forefront when it comes to women's rights, and black women have always been leaders in this movement. 
I stand here because of the support of women, the late Congresswoman and Assemblymember Juanita Miller and McDonald, uh, the late Gwen Moore, uh, former um, senator on this floor and ambassador and congressperson Diane Watson and someone we're honoring today, Karen Bass. Back, black women continue to leave their mark in every field, including philanthropy, civic life, culture, and social justice. Many recognize the names of Herrick Tum Tubman, Rosa Parks, Maya Angelou, and Nina Simone. But there are some names you might not be familiar with, like Mary Church Terrell, the first African-American woman to receive a, a four-year degree in, in the late 1800s, and also was at the forefront of women's suffrage, voting rights, and civil rights. But Californians also have uh, had many black women who have been pioneers who have made remarkable achievements some of whom we were lucky enough to all serve with as colleagues. California's first Surgeon General, Dr. Nadine Burke Harris, the first woman to chair the Congressional Black Caucus, the first uh, member of the black member of the legislative, I mean, uh, Los Angeles Board of Supervisors, and the first black woman to be elected to the assembly, none other than Yvonne Brathwaite Burke, California's black Secretary of State, my former professor, Dr. Shirley Weber, first black woman speaker of the assembly and former member of Congress, and now LA's first woman mayor, none other than Karen Bass, the founding member of the National Organization of Black Elected Legislative Women, again, Gwen Moore, the first African-American to chair the House Appropriations Subcommittee on state, foreign, and operations and related programs, and the only member of Congress to oppose the use of military force after the 9-11, none other than Congresswoman Barbara Lee, and the first uh, woman at Attorney General here in California and Vice President Kamala Harris. And we also have to recognize our first black uh, Supreme Court Justice, Katanji Jackson. The Legislative Black Caucus is proud to have so many members and constitutional officers who have made and continue to make historic accomplishments for women. Women's History Month provides an opportunity to learn about the historic role that not only black women, but all women have played across the state, across this nation, and around the world. While we celebrate their accomplishments, we must also acknowledge the work that still needs to be done in ending the violence, discrimination, and har harassment against all women, but especially women of color, and helping achieve economic and political equ equality. I'm honored to stand here in full support of SR21, and I respectfully ask for I vote. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Bradford. Senator Rubio, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam President. Ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, today I stand, I rise on behalf of the Jewish Caucus. Women's Her Story Month is an important opportunity to reflect and honor the achievements, the accomplishments, and the legacies of the many women who have come before us. Attempts to minimize and ignore the contributions of women in every aspect of our lives are often utilized as justifications to block them from participating in various sectors of our society, whether it be as inventors, artists, leaders, teachers, healers, and so many others, women make vital contributions to our lives. In recent years, we have seen a growing movement to strip women of their bodily autonomy, informed by a cynical and patriarchal philosophy. This month, we remind ourselves of our history, of times when women have been both included and excluded from the narratives that shape our lives. While Jewish women have long held positions of influence in their own communities, they have also been crucial in the broader fight for women's liberation and equality. Earlier this month, we lost Judith Human, a leader in the disability rights movement who led the 1977 takeover of the San Francisco Federal Building to date the sit-in of a federal building in which led to the reenactment of Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act, a precursor to the ADA. Dorothy Miller Zellner was a co-editor of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee's newsletter and a recruiter of the Freedom Summer. She continued her activism to this day. As writers like Jamaica Kincaid and Gloria Steinman remind us a better world is possible, not just for some, but for all. I am so proud to vote aye on SR21 today in honor and remembrance of our foremothers, 
Thank you. And I ask for an I vote. Thank you. Senator Allen, you are recognized. Members, I rise in strong support for this resolution. Uh, I want to point out one particular story that we're going to highlight on Thursday relating to the incredible courage of the women and girls of Iran standing up for their rights. Uh, today uh, also marks no ruse, and I'd just like to take an opportunity to invite each of you on your way out to stop by room 115. It's literally the room just to the left as you're uh, heading out today. We have a beautiful uh, no ruse celebration with symbols associated with the holiday. This is a New Year celebration celebrated uh, throughout much of the Middle East. And our, our presentation focuses a lot on the, on the current struggle for human rights uh, that, that, that is currently underway, uh, fought by the, the women and girls of Iran. And so I just invite you to share in that story uh, and be a part of it, room 115, as you, as you exit the building. No ruse, Peters, everyone. I, 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 I strongly urge and I vote on SR 21. Thank you very much, Senator. And please pay special attention to my honoree, who is an Iranian woman who stands up for international rights. Senator Gonzalez, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam President. As Vice Chair of the Latino Caucus, but we also referringly, uh, lovingly refer to it now as the Latina Caucus, it is my honor to rise today in strong support of SR 21. Uh, as chair of, uh, Vice Chair of the Caucus, which happens to be majority women, as I mentioned, 21 Democratic Latin, Latina legislators, nine of us here in the State Senate, I feel it's important for me to address the impact Latinas have had in our everyday lives. Over 31 million Latinas live in our great country, and each one adds to our amazing mosaic of residents. They are consumers, parents, employers, and voters. Here in California, we have many Latinas who have become distinguished leaders in their fields and champions of change, including labor leader and civil rights activist Dolores Huerta, State Supreme Court Chief Justice Patricia, Patricia Guerrero, and famed recording, or recording artist excuse me, and political activist Joan Baez. Nationally, we look up to many other proud Latinas like Ju Justice Sonia Sotomayor, astronaut Ellen Ochoa, and actress Rita Moreno, or Supervisor Glor Gloria Molina, who have been trailblazers in their respective fields and continue to inspire future generations of Latina leaders. But there are also so many other inspirational leaders who are often overlooked, like our essential workers that keep our economy running during the, during the pandemic. They ensure food is on our tables and create new businesses. They clean our hotels. Uh, and fuel our economic resurgence. They all yearn for the American dream, strive for greater representation, and serve as forces of change in all aspects of our society. Members, please join me in supporting this important resolution, and by extension, honoring all the women who have helped weave the extraordinary historical tapestry for what we call America. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Senator Skinner, would you like to close? Seeing no other members wishing to be recognized, Senator Skinner. I appreciate the remarks of my colleagues, and I urge an I vote. Secretary, call the roll. Allen. Aye. Aye. Alvarado Gill. Aye. Aye. Archuleta. Aye. Aye. Ashby. Aye. Aye. Atkins. Aye. Aye. Becker. Aye. Aye. Blakespear. Aye. Aye. Bradford. Aye. Aye. Caballero. Aye. Aye. Cortese. Aye. Aye. Daly. Aye. Aye. Dodd. I Durazo, I Eggman, I Glazer, I Gonzalez, I Grove, I Hurtado, I Jones, I Laird, I Lamone, I McGuire, I Menjabar, I Min, I Newman, I Wynn, I Nilo, I Ochoa Bogue, I Padilla. I Portentino, I Roth, I Rubio, I Sayarto, I Skinner, I Smallwood Cuevas, I Stern Umberg, I Wahab, I Wiener, I Wilk. Call the absent members. Stern Wilk. Ayes 38, no zero. The resolution is adopted. At this time, we are going to recess our regular session and begin our Women Making History ceremony. We're going to start with, uh, this is the Lieutenant Governor Kunalakis' honoree. It's going to be escorted by our own pro tem. Madam Secretary. 
Lieutenant Governor Kunalakis's honoree, Ebony Ava Harper, escorted by Senate President Pro Tempore Atkins. Ebony is the Executive Director of California Transcends, a statewide initiative that works to promote the health and wellness of the transgender people. She serves as board member for the Transgender Law Center and Mira Memoirs Borealis Philanthropy and as co-chair of Lieutenant Governor Kunalakis's California Transgender Advisory Council. Congratulations, Ms. Harper. Secretary. Legislative Women's Caucus honoree, Sonia Christian, escorted by Caucus Chair Senator Skinner. As the first woman chancellor of the California Community College System, Dr. Christian has been appointed to lead the largest public higher education system in the nation, serving 1.8 million students. Chancellor Christian began her three-decade career as a mathematics professor, going on to serve as Dean of Science, Engineering, Allied Health, and Mathematics at Bakersfield College. In 2013, she was named President of Bakersfield College. And in July 2021, she was appointed the sixth chancellor of the Kern Community College District. Chancellor Christian is a fierce advocate for the life-changing ability of community colleges to rapidly advance student success and economic mobility with equity. A glass ceiling breaker indeed. From Senate District 28 and 35, Los Angeles Mayor Karen Bass, escorted by Senators Smallwood Cuevas and Bradford. Mayor Karen Bass made history as the first woman and second African American to be elected as the mayor of Los Angeles. She also represented Los Angeles in both Sacramento and Washington, D.C. for nearly two decades. Mayor Bass served as the Speaker of the California State Assembly, making her the first African American woman to ever lead a state legislative body in the history of the United States. Mayor Karen Bass is a trailblazer, mentor, and role model who has made it her life's work to fight for social and economic justice. From Senate District 1, Marjean Stone, escorted by Senator Daly. Marjean Stone has dedicated her life to serving Californians in need. After more than two decades with the Far Northern Regional Center, serving adults with developmental disabilities, upon her retirement, she led the Empire Recovery Center in Reading, providing critically needed substance abuse treatment services and helping turn lives around. From Senate District 2, Judge Abby Abinati, escorted by Senator McGuire. Judge Abby Abinati is a trailblazer. She was the first Native American woman to pass the state bar. For nearly two decades, Judge Abby has been chief judge for the Yurok tribe and is today is leading the Yurok tribe's response to the missing and murdered indigenous people crisis. From Senate District 3, Linda Canty, escorted by Senator Dodd. 
Linda lives in Napa Valley and is an exceptional leader, devoting herself to nonprofits, including Napa Communities Firewise Foundation, Land Trust of Napa Valley, If Given a Chance Foundation, and Napa Learns. She found Claris Consulting Group in 1999 and served as president of the Project Management Institute, Washington, D.C. From Senate District 4, Anamika Chan Singh, escorted by Senator Alvarado Gill. Ms. Anamika Chan Singh is a single mother, nurse and advocate for Blue Line Wives. Anamika has demonstrated great resilience and leadership in public service despite undergoing a life-altering loss in 2018. Her husband, Corporal Ronel Singh, with the Newman Police Department, was gunned down in the line of duty on Christmas night. Despite this tragedy, Anamika has committed her life to making her community a better place by fundraising thousands of dollars for charity. From Senate District 5, Mana Shastari. Escorted by Senator Eggman, Mana Shastari is a first-generation Iranian-American activist from Stockton. Inspired by the courageous Iranian people starting a revolution after Masha Zina Amini was murdered, Mana's gender, gender equality and human rights activism resulted in her addressing the United Nations during the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. From Senate District 6, Anne Marie Schubert, escorted by Senator Nilo. Anne Marie Schubert spent most of her 32 year career prosecuting some of the area's most notorious and dangerous criminals. She served as Sacramento District Attorney from 2015 through 2022. In 2018, she led the investigation and prosecution of Joseph D'Angelo, the Golden State Killer. She is nationally recognized for her knowledge of forensic DNA and provides consulting on a variety of public safety issues. From Senate District 7, Janet Frazier, escorted by Senator Glazer. Janet Frazier, Retired from Chevron after 41 years and spends time with the Network of Care, a nonprofit she founded feeding families of children in hospitals. Janet is also a founder of Our Healing Hearts, supporting women who have lost children. She lives in Concord with her life partner, Brendan. From Senate District 8, Lachelle Dozier, escorted by Senator Ashby. Lachelle Dozier is the executive director of the Sacramento Housing and Redevelopment Agency, where she oversees community development and revitalization strategies in the city and county of Sacramento, as well as the provision of housing for more than 50,000 low-income residents using a wide variety of programs and financing mechanisms. From Senate District 10, Rona Papal, escorted by Senator Wahab. Rona Papal 
is the founder of the oldest nonprofit focused on serving the Afghan community in the United States. She's a women's rights advocate, tireless community organizer, and an outspoken proponent of civil liberties and human rights. New arrivals receive support, support in housing stability, mental health services, and domestic violence support because Rona Papal has dedicated her life to helping refugees cope with traumatic experiences of the 40-year war in Afghanistan. Rona Papal is the epitome of hard work, dedication, and leaving the world a better place than you found it. From Senate District 11, Mary Y. y. Jung, escorted by Senator Weiner. Mary Jung, a longtime San Franciscan, has dedicated her life to civil engagement and community activism. Ms. Jung has served on San Francisco Civil Service Commission, the Commission on the Status of Women, and the San Francisco Democratic Party Central Committee, where she served as chair from 2012 through 2016. From Senate District 12, Lisa Smithcamp, escorted by Senator Grove. Lisa Smithcamp was elected as the Fresno County District Attorney in June 2014 and sworn into office in January 2015. After being a respected fixture in the Central Valley's legal community for over 20 years, this January marked the beginning of Smithcamp's third term. She is the second female to be the elected District Attorney in Fresno County. From Senate District 13, Belinda Hernandez Ariaga, escorted by Senator Becker. Dr. Belinda Hernandez Ariaga, a clinical social worker, is founder and executive director of, of Ayudando Latinos a Soñar, a program dedicated to working with Latino rural youth and families living on the coast side. She was a leader in helping the families of the victims of the mass shooting that took place in Half Moon Bay on January 23rd. From Senate District 14, Tamara Cobb, escorted by Senator Caballero. Tamara Cobb is a native of Merced. She was the first black family support officer to work for the Merced District Attorney's Office. She is a founding member of the Merced Black Parallel School Board, foster parents since 1990, and the current president and organizer of the Merced MLK Junior Committee. We would ask for silence. From Senate District 15, Deanna Persai, escorted by Senator Cortese. Deanna Persai is co-founder and executive director of the College of Adaptive Arts, which provides an equitable collegiate experience to adults with disabilities. She is an active Rotarian in the Bay Area. She was named a CNN hero in April of 2022 and a Maria Shriver Architect of Change in 2015.
from Senate District 16, Lola G. Lerma, escorted by Senator Hurtado. Lola Lerma married the late Ray Lerma and moved to Corcoran where they raised their children, Eva, Ramon, and Pablo. Lola worked for Corcoran City Unified School District as the district bilingual coordinator and taught third grade at John C. Fremont for 32 years. During that time, Lola was actively involved in volunteering for local and county organizations that would benefit children, their families, and the community. From Senate District 17, Celia Moses, escorted by Senator Laird. Celia Moses was born and raised in El Salvador until immigrating to the United States at age 14. She's dedicated her life to empowering second language learners and was recognized as both the teacher and district administrator of the year. Celia is the principal at Georgia Brown Elementary, a public dual immersion program. From Senate District 18, Martha Zapata, escorted by Senator Padilla. Martha Zapata has been an incredible asset to multiple San Diego City Council members as Director of Community Outreach. Highly regarded by longtime community members, activists, and colleagues, Martha's tireless work and tenacity over many years has provided an abundance of opportunity and resources for the communities she represents. From Senate District 19, Graciela Casillas, escorted by Senator Lamone. Graciela Casillas, an eight-time Hall of Fame inductee in martial arts, has achieved international recognition for her remarkable accomplishments in the field of martial science. She is a world champion self-defense instructor and lecturer. She holds two master's degree as an author and works on an academic, as an academic counselor at Oxnard College. From Senate District 20, Maribel Garcia, escorted by Senator Menjivar. Maribel Garcia commits her life to uplifting and empowering women and LGBTQ communities. Founder of Chica's Mom, she opened one of the first San Fernando Valley food pantries during the pandemic. Maribel, CEO of Latinos and Diseño, provides resources to Latinas who want to build and grow their small business. From Senate District 23, Barbara Reardon, escorted by Senator Ochoa Bogue. Barbara Reardon served on the California Air Resources Board from 1991 to 2022 and is currently on the Redlands Community Foundation and Mojave Desert Air Quality Management District. Since the 1970s, she served on the local boards of United Way, the Chamber of Commerce, Family Service Association, and the Inland Empire Cultural Foundation.
from Senate District 24, Maryam Zar, escorted by Senator Allen. Maryam Zar, an Iranian-born U.S. immigrant, holds degrees in communication and law. She reported from Iran and worked as a young female news editor before returning to the U.S. Today, she volunteers in LA's West Side to advocate for global and local issues, including women's rights, homelessness, housing, and international policy. From Senate District 25, Mary Alvord, escorted by Senator Portentino. A proud lifelong resident, Mary Alvord had a career working for the city of Burbank, which spanned 38 years. In her 10 years as Parks and Recreation Director, she oversaw several capital improvement projects. From 2000 to 2003, Ms. Alvord served as the Assistant City Manager, and in 2003, by unanimous vote of the City Council, she was named the first woman city manager in Burbank's history. From Senate District 26, Evelina Fernandez, escorted by Senator DeRazzo, Born and raised in East Los Angeles, Evelina Fernandez is an award-winning playwright, screenwriter, and actor, best known for playing Julie in the iconic Chicano film, American Me, and Andrea in the film, Luminarias. She is a founding member and board member of the Latino Theater Company, where she continues to write and produce the stories about the Chicano, Mexicano community. From Senate District 27, Ileana Tavera, escorted by Senator Gonzalez on behalf of Senator Stern. Ileana Tavera was named the Executive Director of Haven Hills in 2015. Ms. Tavera has over 25 years of experience in nonprofit management, fundraising, operations, and a strong track record of developing successful collaborations among private sector, nonprofit, and community partners. At Haven Hills, Ileana is responsible for managing one of the largest domestic violence providers in Los Angeles County. From Senate District 29, Kelly Vlahakis Hanks, escorted by Senator Newman. Kelly Vlahakis Hanks is the president and CEO of ECOS, a Cypress-based manufacturer of innovated, innovative plant-based detergent and cleaning products. She has transformed her family's company and led ECOS to achieve carbon neutrality, water neutrality, and true platinum zero waste certification while giving back to the community through philanthropic involvement. From Senate District 30, Mary Sue, escorted by Senator Archuleta. Mary Sue is a longtime leader in education and civic and humanitarian affairs. She founded the Chinese American Parents' Association of Walnut Valley Unified School District and is president of the Chinese Music Association of Southern California. Mary has fundraised for earthquake relief and the American Cancer Society and other organizations.
from District 32, Bridget Moore, escorted by Senator Sayarto. Wildemar Mayor Pro Tem Bridget Moore has a true public servant's heart, having served on the City Council since incorporation in 2008, including two years as mayor. She strives to enhance residents' quality of life through the many organizations she volunteers her time to, including the Wildemar Beautification Project. From Senate District 33, Lucia Velos, escorted by Senator Gonzalez. Lucia Velos started organizing domestic violence workshops, becoming involved in environmental organizations and mobilizing tenants. Her drive to protect tenant rights led her to form Vecinas Unidas de Bell Gardens, a woman-led organization focused on tenants' rights. Her hard, work, her hard work paid off when the city passed a rent control ordinance. From Senate District 34, Samantha Maria Soto, escorted by Senator Umberg. Sammy is a fire communications supervisor at the Orange County Fire Authority. She joined OCFA in 2007 and became an OCEA member the same year. She became a steward in 2014. She is also a member of the Budget Committee, serves on the bargaining team, is a member of the OCFA's Joint Labor Management Committee, and is an OC Labor Federation delegate. Sammy enjoys working hard to ensure that union members are represented to the fullest. She has a good working relationship with the staff and management at OCFA. Sammy is an instrumental voice in the fight for fair contracts at OCFA in difficult negotiations and a, and a, public, and a public outreach campaign. From, Sen from Senate District 36, Mai Huynh, escorted by Senator Huynh. Following the fall of Saigon, Mai Huynh left her home in Vietnam to come to the United States in search of freedom and democracy. Starting as a nail technician, Mai worked hard to save and grow one salon into 50. Today she has achieved the American dream and lives in Orange County with her husband, four daughters, and grandchildren. From Senate District 37, Kate Wheeler, escorted by Senator Min. Kate leads Crystal Grove Conservancy's work to restore the beach cottages in the historic district, educating students and protecting the park's resources for California visitors. Kate previously led the International Fund for Animal Welfare's development work and sits on the board of directors for the California League of Park Associations. From Senate District 38, Jennifer Iannole, escorted by Senator Blakespear. Jen Iannole of Vista, California, demonstrates exceptional leadership by speaking up for the voiceless. She is a community leader, advocate, educator, and activist. As the director of Unicorn Homes at the North County LGBTQ Resource Center, she serves as a mentor and provides transitional housing to LGBTQ plus youth experiencing homelessness.
from Senate District 9, Latifa Simon, escorted by Senator Skinner. Latifa Simon is a member of the BART and CSU boards, a police reform advocate, and a former recipient of a MacArthur Foundation Genius Grant. At the age of just 19, she became executive director of the Center for Young Women's Development. Simon is also executive director of the Meadow Fund and past executive director of the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights. From Senate District 39, Dr. Lache Ajayi. Dr. Lache Ajayi is a first generation immigrant, mother of three, and the first black woman president of the San Diego County Medical Society. She is passionate about prenatal health equity and leads a team seeking to improve access to research for historically marginalized populations of pregnant people. If we could have a round of applause for all of our honorees. We honored women today from medicine, from science, from community work, from activism. Everywhere that there are places to have an impact, we have women there. And we are so honored to have you with us today. If members would take their seats, we're going to try to get a picture of all of the honorees in the back. If, so if members could take their seats for a minute, we can get all of these glorious women in one shot. We know the future of California is strong because you are it. Thank you very much. Congratulations. You are glorious.